I tell you. <laughs> Let me get everything together. <laughs> All right. So um, we're about to get started with Fresh Manor this morning. Super excited what God is doing. Let me get my, my stuff together here. We're on the conference call and as well as on Facebook Live. And so I'm going to go to my Facebook Live page. And I'm going to share before I get started. If y'all could do that, I would appreciate it. If you're on, go ahead and share. Share this with others in Jesus' name. What an easy way to, to uh, just spread the gospel. I mean, that's, that's easy. That's, that's just easy breezy. You know, the Lord has made it so easy for us to get the word. We ain't never in our lifetime had it this easy that all you got to do is cut on your uh, uh, device, Facebook, go on Facebook or, or pick up the phone and get ministered to. I mean, super easy. Uh, and still, some folks still won't, <laughs> won't do right by that. I tell you what. Woo-wee. Mm-mm-mm. But I know you all do right by it because y'all be on. <laughs> Let me plug this phone back up. Hold on. I want my phone to go out. I got to put it on the charger. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Okay. Hey there. Let me see who we got on here on Facebook. Let me see who is showing me. We oh, Shelby Rankin. Oh, I've never seen Shelby before. Tony, Tony Lisby. Hello, ladies. Sister Francis, how you doing? Sister Francis, Francis Isaac. Cynthia Portis, glory to God. Trina Hill. Sister Willie Evans. Lisa Lyons. Whoa. All right. Well, praise the Lord, y'all. And if I didn't say your name, it's because I didn't see your name. You know, it don't show me all the names. But... Welcome, ladies. Welcome, everyone, in Jesus' name. Glory to God. So, if you got my text, you, you'll know that uh, the lesson today, the what the Lord will have us today, is to minister on the last lesson, class dismissed. That's the name of the lesson. The last lesson, class dismissed. And so, we're we're about to start uh, uh, Passion Week. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, Sunday is Palm Sunday. And we're about to start Passion Week. And so uh, the Lord has just led me to uh, take out some of the things uh, or to uh, minister on some of the things that uh, was happening around that time. And so we're going to really... Uh, I think we're going to really enjoy this in Jesus' name. Amen. As our people are still getting on Facebook and on our conference call, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we praise you and we thank you for this wonderful and blessed day because this is the day that you have made. We're rejoicing and so glad in it. We thank you, Lord, for making it so easy for us to get your word. Lord, let us be diligent. Lord, let us be diligent at it. Lord, because you've given us uh, something that is much more precious than gold. That's your word and a relationship with you. And so, Lord, we cherish this time with you. We cherish this time with you, Holy Spirit. And Lord, take control of this meeting, Holy Spirit. <laughs> Use me the way you see fit to minister to your people as I sit alongside them growing up in the things of God. Thank you, Father, for it. This wonderful and blessed day, this wonderful lesson that you're teaching us, let us never forget and let us not just forget it. Let us act on it. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, today, like I said, we're going to be talking about the last lesson class dismissed. You know, it's very interesting to me uh, when someone is about to, uh, you know, if they're about to die or they're about to leave or, or and they know that things, you know, 
they're leaving and they won't see you again as they see you now. Uh, oftentimes, they uh, uh, people will uh, tell you one of the most important things for you to remember. They'll emphasize different things for you to remember. Uh, they'll say, "This is listen, listen now. I haven't taught you a lot of stuff, but this is what I want you to remember." And Jesus, uh, his last lesson that he taught his disciples, one of his last lessons that he taught his disciples through precept and example was this. Turn with me, if you have your Bibles, to John chapter 13. John chapter 13, and I'm going to begin reading with the first verse in the internet, uh, uh, NIV translation. That's the New International Version. NIV translation. Okay? So, let's start reading. It was just about the Passover. It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And so here's Jesus. He knows that the, things are wrapping up. Things are, I gotta, I, things are going, going on. Things are, are about to happen. So I've got I to gotta really emphasize something to these guys. This is something, this is an action. This is something that I want them to remember. This is something that I want them to never forget. The evening meal was in progress. And the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot to portray him, to portray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. So here is Jesus. Now, let me just make sure you understand. Washing the feet, washing people's feet was reserved for the servants to do. It was reserved for those who uh, were servants, those who were slaves or or servants, uh, uh, anybody uh, that uh, uh, was of any standing, anybody that was important, they didn't wash people's feet. This was reserved for the servants. Wait a minute, Lord, what are you doing? First of all, you notice here he said he took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel around his waist, and so he took off his 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 uh, his good clothes. <laughs> And he wrapped a towel around his waist. He prepared himself to serve. Notice there, he took off and put on. You know, if you're going to really serve, you got to take off some stuff and put on some stuff. If you're going to really serve properly. Now, serving, I love serving. That, I just do. Uh, it's just in me. I love serving. I'm always good at. It. I've always been good at serving, and I love doing it. And and and. But in order to serve properly, you have to put on, off, take off. You have to take off who you are and your your position and your prestige and your accolades and your uh, 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 who you think you are, and you have to put on the mind of a servant. You have to put on the attitude of a servant. You have to humble yourself. Here's Jesus. The son of God. Jesus who is God manifest in the flesh. Doing something that servants do. Doing something that nobody else wants to do. You know, they walked around everywhere. They basically mostly placed, most of the places they went, they walked and they wore sandals and everything so their feet would be dirty and crusty and all kinds of stuff going on with the feet. And so when they uh, when a servant came to wash the feet it was it was it was not a very pretty job. 
It was not a job sought after. Wait a minute. So when you take off all your accolades, when you take off who you think you are and, and your uh, 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 uppity self and, we, and put on the mind of a servant, uh, then uh, you take on a job that nobody else wants. You're doing the action that could be uh, lowly. That's not pretty. He wrapped a towel around his waist. How many of y'all out there, Facebook land, conference call land, how many of y'all out there have the heart of a servant? You see, a heart of a, a person that walks around with the heart of a servant, there is nothing that is beneath them that they would not help. They're always looking for helping somebody. They don't walk around uh, 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 with their head up so high that they can't see things that are going on down low. Oh, let me say it again. They don't walk around with their head up so high that they can't see what's going on down low. Well, he washed their feet. He could see what was going on down low. And after that, he poured water into a basin. And began to wash the disciples' feet. Hey, hey, wait a minute. After that, he poured water into a basin. He didn't say, Pete, go get me some water. He didn't say, hey, John, go get me some water. Hey, hey, you got anybody to give me some water because I want to do something right here. No, he poured water into a basin. You see, so often we say we want to serve, we want to help, but we want other folks to do it for us. We want other folks to assist us with it. Sometimes you got to serve all by yourself. And he began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around his waist. Can you see Jesus? going from one disciple to the next, washing their feet and drying it with the towel around his waist. Wait a minute now. Let me just back up here. Drying it with the towel around his waist. That means he was prepared to serve. He ain't say, hey, I'm washing the feet, but somebody, I ain't got no towel, so they just gonna have to air dry. He was prepared <laughs> He was prepared to serve. He was prepared to meet the need. He was prepared to finish the job. So many people say they're serving. So many people say they're about to do this and about to do that. And they halfway do it. Because they wasn't prepared. He was prepared to serve. He was prepared to finish the job. With the towel. Oh! We got too many halfway, half done things going on in the body of Christ. Because we wasn't prepared, we just left it undone. It started out good. It started out right. But we was not prepared. So we did not finish it off right we did not we did not <laughs> finish the job what what things do you have out there that god has had for you to do that you have left undone that you have left unfinished how many things have god called for you to do in serving others that you have not finished the job. You just quit because you got tired. Or you just quit because you didn't have all the stuff necessary to finish. Because you wasn't prepared. How many things? Oh, my, 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 my. Mm. And came. And he, uh, verse, verse 6. He came to Simon Peter. Who said to him, Lord, are we, are you washing? Are you going to wash my feet? 
So when he finally came to Peter, he watching, here's Peter. Now let's just look at it. Here's Peter watching Jesus. He didn't got up. He even took off his outer garment and he put a towel around his waist. What is he about to do? Peter, you know, he Peter is always curious. He's always, what's he about to do? Then when he filled the basin with water, he's watching. What is, wait, 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 wait a minute. Then he started washing the disciples' feet, possibly starting with James or John or Bartholomew or one of them. And he started washing their feet. And when he Peter, when he came to Peter, Peter had a question. Now the rest of them were just getting their feet washed. They didn't have no question at all. He said, Hey, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You do not realize now what I'm doing, but later you will understand. He said, You don't realize what I'm doing right now, but later you will understand. Pete, we're still in class. I'm still explaining this out. I'm still showing you what I'm doing, Pete. Just, just settle down, son. Settle down. Then Pete, no, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Why would you say that, Peter? Why would you want Jesus to wash your feet? No, you shall never wash my feet. Why not, Pete? Because, see, this was a job reserved for servants. This was a lowly job. Lord, what are you doing? Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. He said, if I don't wash you, you ain't got no part with me. Now, let's stop right there. What does that mean? What, what are you saying, Lord? If I, if the Lord is saying, if I cannot serve you, then you won't have a part in me. You see, part of our relationship with God, part of the, 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 the relationship that we have with God is that he's, he serves us. He wants to answer your prayers. He wants to uh, 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 be the shoulder that you lean on. He wants to be your bridge over troubled water. He wants to serve you. Oh, wait a minute, Lord. Hold on. I'm supposed to serve you, not you serve me. He said, this is a mutual thing here. He said, and then, uh, then Lord, Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. He said, go and wash me, Lord, because I want to have a part in you. I want to have a part in you. It couldn't be possible that we, uh, we're so wrapped up in our serving the Lord till we forget that he wants to serve us. He wants to bless you. He wants to, he wants to answer your prayers. He wants to be that shoulder that you lean on. He wants to give you strength. He wants to give you peace. He wants to serve you. Jesus answered, those, Jesus answers, those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean. And you are clean, even though not every one of you. Oh, and you are clean, though not every one of you. Now, who was he talking about? Remember, back up, he was talking about Judas Iscariot. The devil had already prompted Judas on what he was going to do in portraying Jesus. Now hold it right there. Jesus washed the disciples' feet. All of them, even Judas' feet. What is that telling you? When we serve, we're not to discriminate on who likes us and who doesn't like us. We're not to discriminate on our uh, 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 just our friends and not our enemies. The Lord says, serve across the board. See, love loves everybody, even if you don't love me back. Love serves everybody, even if you don't like me, even if you wouldn't give me a plug dime, even whatever, I just want to serve. Love does not discriminate. Serving the, uh, serving the Lord's way does not discriminate. Ah, oh, he even washed Judas' feet. He knew that Judas was going to betray him. He knew that Judas was about to do something that would put right, uh, would uh, uh, place him in uh, the hall of yucky people 
<laughs> forever. <laughs> Judas, he still washed his feet. So why are we discriminating when we are blessing people? Why do we discriminate and say, oh, I'm going to give everybody a piece of chicken except for him or her? Oh, I'm going to talk nice to everybody except for this person because they don't like me. You see, well, our actions of love sometimes can change the heart of people. And you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew he was going to betray him. And that he was, and that was why he said not everyone was clean. He knew Judas was not clean. And washing his feet wasn't going to help him because he had already put in his mind to betray Jesus. He even washed Judas' feet. Serving. Can you serve like that? Can you serve? People that don't like you. You know, we, we've been in the ministry all of our adult lives. we served a lot of people <laughs> since we were teenagers. And you know what? If you're going to serve by the Holy Spirit, you don't serve because people like you. You don't serve them because they, you don't serve them because they didn't talk about you. You don't serve them because they're not with you. You serve them because that's the way God wants it. Because you want to show the love of God in everything. And you want to be a servant of all. Jesus, oh, I like that. Jesus, the servant of all. Good God Almighty. When he had finished washing their feet, he had put on his clothes and returned to his place. He washed all 12. Do you understand what I've done for you? He asked them. I'm reading out the NIV translation. You call me teacher and Lord and rightly so. For that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. So he told, so he's telling them the point. I washed your feet. Now you need to wash others, your, uh, one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Verily, truly, I say, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. The kingdom of God operates so different, doesn't it? So the chiefest servant, the one that is the chiefest servant is really actually the master. And the one who serves least is the least. <laughs> he said, he said, uh, he said, the way that you can truly know my disciples is by the way they love each other, the love for the brethren. Why the way that we are trademark, our uh, distinguishing mark, our what sets us apart is how we love and serve. You should be able to see that people should be able to see that you're a Christian, that you're a born again believer by your actions, by the way you serve and help people, by the way you love people. This is what I want you to do. Wash one another's feet. Be there for one another. Support one another. Uplift one another. Help clean up. Oh, wash one another's feet. That means you're helping to clean up one another. Oftentimes, when we see one of our brothers fall, we 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 pick up some more dirt and put it on them. We put them through a mud bath. They already been sunk in mud. They already been towed up from the floor up, and we get a brick and we throw it at them and and, and rock them up. Like, like uh, Kenneth Copeland said, that the body of Christ is the only army that shoots its wounded. No, that ain't the way it's supposed to be. We're supposed to clean each other up. We're supposed to help each other up. We're supposed to be there for each other. Not leave each other. Not disband each other. Not throw each other aside. Not get rid of each other. But help each other. Clean each other. Be there for each other. The, that is the difference between a born-again believer who is truly led by the Holy Spirit and walking in love. They won't leave you. 
They won't quit on you. They won't try to destroy you. Ah. Oh. So we find here. Servant. Is the way that we. Mimic Christ. You know we have a mentorship program. And, and uh, we're about to get it back. Started back up again. We had to pause because of. Pandemic. And one of the main things that we teach. Or the whole scope of the mentorship program. Is servanthood. How to serve. How to serve. You know. We 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 got it mixed up. We got it we got it in a bad situation that we don't understand the power of servanthood, the power of being there for people, the power of being of helping people. But you know the Jewish people understand this, and they understand uh, this rabbi that uh, 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 was talking, and he has a book called Thou Shalt prosper. And in the book, he's talking about how they understand the power of servanthood. When you help people to help to make people's lives better, then finances and money will come to you. You get rich through that. We, but we think, no, we're going to get rich and then we might help some folks. Let me make sure I take care of myself first. Uh, let me make sure I, I, I'm all hooked up. No, you get hooked up by helping others. You get hooked up by making someone else's life better. That's how you get hooked up. That's how, you, that's how resources will come to you. I have seen it in my life. I have seen it over and over again. When we, uh, our lives have been uh, formulated around serving and helping people and supplies and resources and everything comes to us because we want to help people and serve people and make people's lives better. Servanthood is the key to prosperity. Not hoarding up, not thinking about yourself, not blowing up the bridge so nobody else can get over, not making sure you got yours and forget everybody else. Servanthood is the key to prosperity. When you serve, then you'll be blessed. When you serve and lay down, he said, greater love have no man than this, then he lay down his life for his friends. When you lose your life, then you'll find it. In other words, when you give your life over to serving and helping people and loving people, that's when you're going to really start living. That's when you're going to really gain life. I'm alive. I'm, I'm, I, you know, some people just exist. You ain't, they say they're alive, but they just exist. I'm alive and excited and, and life is adventurous because I serve people. I serve the Lord as I'm serving people. Put it that way. I serve the Lord as I'm serving people. Ah, I love washing my brother's feet, if you will. Helping to clean them up. Helping them to get out the hole they're in. Helping to stand them back up. Helping to dust them off. <laughs> Help them to give them uh, strength to keep on going. Oh, it ain't nothing like serving. Have you ever heard somebody say this? Man, I gave that, but it blessed me more than it blessed them. That's because when you get into serving, when you get into blessing people, when you get into making other people's life, your life becomes, has more meaning. Your life has more. If you're out there, let me just say this. If you're out there and you're depressed and you're weighed down and everything seems dark, I'm going to tell you how to get out of it. Go help someone else. I didn't say listen to a bunch of junk of problems and all that. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about go help them by making them a meal or or, or, or by sewing some clothes for them or by cutting their grass or by uh, just loving on them or calling them and telling them an encouraging word. You'll find the, the light in your heart, the light in your soul will begin to light up and the dark places will begin to leave. Go help someone. Serving is the way out of depression, out of, uh, of, 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 of dark places. 
When you help someone else, it lightens you up. It lightens your soul up. It lightens your life up. It lightens your... Go read to someone in a convalescent home or, or go visit them or, or uh, just make it a habit or, or make it a, a ministry of just, you know, baking cakes like, a, you know, I do outreach cakes. I, I enjoy it. breaking the outreach cakes to give to people and watch them eat it and just sit there smiling at. It. I mean, just uh, 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 I remember uh, 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 some years ago when we first moved back here to Mississippi, uh, we had some. We had uh, we just we we just always liked helping folks, and, and we just take what we got and we just use that. And so uh, it was one gentleman who. Uh, uh, he was, he was not a, he was ill. He was recovering from a sickness and, and we had this, 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 this lawnmower cost my husband $50 to get this lawnmower. It wasn't no great lawnmower, but it did the job. And so we just loaded up that lawnmower in our car, took it over to their house and we would take it over to their house and just cut their grass. And uh, while pastor was cutting their grass, pastor, you hear me? Cutting their grass. I was cutting the hedges. Do I know how to do that? No. But we just wanted to serve and wanted to bless and wanted to be there for this gentleman and his wife while he was recovering from his sickness. Did we make a big deal out of it and blow our horns? No. Because it was about serving them. We took the, the thing that the, the little, the, the, the lawnmower that we had And bless them by cutting their grass, cutting their hedges, buying little flowers to put out on their porch while he's recovering. We couldn't pay for a landscaper at that time. We was recovering ourselves. Oh, wait a minute. We was recovering ourselves. We didn't have the money for somebody else to pay for somebody else to do it. We had to do it ourselves. And boy, we had fun out there doing it. Me and Pastor cutting the grass and cutting the hedges and sweeping the porch and, you know, doing all this because we love them and we love God. And we knew that would be pleasing to him as we served. You always, my mother told me this. She said, Leslie, you always have something you can give. I challenge you as we start this, uh, as we start this Passion Week, I challenge you, find a place where you can serve and help others. Show forth and walk in what Jesus was telling his disciples as his last lesson to them. Wash your brother's feet, in other words. Serve someone. Serve people. And also, make sure, if you can, to be in the house of God for Palm Sunday, this Sunday. Get up. My God, get up. Go to church. My God. What this, this here lethargic stuff, it's of the devil. Go to the house of God. Serve in the house of God. Serve others. Be there for people. This Passion Week is here, and I, I admonish you all to, let's just start reading through on some of this passion, uh, what was going on during Passion Week. And let's just really concentrate on the lessons that he gives us through this most pivotal Week for mankind. Father, in the name of Jesus, we praise you and we thank you, Lord, for the heart of servants. Lord, let us have that heart. Let us understand the lesson that you're teaching the disciples. Let us grasp hold to it. Let us reach out and touch people. Let us take whatever you have given us to be a blessing to others. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity to serve people 
as we serve you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, like I said, we have in-person service this Sunday, so you want to be there. It's Palm Sunday. Come to church this Sunday at uh, 11 o'clock. Our address is 136 Byron Parkway. Come and walk into a miracle in the name of Jesus. I tell you, we're going to have a great time in the Lord. Come on out. Bring someone with you. Let's have a wonderful time in the Lord. And also, let's if, if you all can please keep Brother Stanley, uh, uh, Stanley Banks, in your prayers as his brother has gone home to be with the Lord. And we want to make sure that we... Uh, Bless him and his family by praying for them. Uh, reach out and touch him and tell him how you love him. And, and you know, send something to him. To be a blessing to him in the name of Jesus. Let me see. Uh, be a blessing to him in Jesus' name. We have his uh, brother's service. That's what I'm looking for. Oh, let's see. I'm trying to find here. His brother's service times. Just a minute. Okay. So his brother, his brother, uh, brother Stanley's uh, brother, whose name is Mr. Jesse James Travis. Mr. Jesse James Travis went home to be with the Lord. And his uh, family hour, the visitation, the wake will be on Monday. April the 11th from 4 to 6 and uh, at, at the uh, Jackson Memorial Funeral Home on Woodrow Wilson and the funeral will be on the home going service will be Tuesday April the 12th at 11 o'clock a.m. at Mount, Clare, Mount Clarity Missionary Baptist Church on Lake Harbor Drive in Ridgeland. And so we want to make sure that we support Brother Stanley in the name of Jesus. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for Brother Stanley. We thank you for his entire family, especially Brother Stanley's beautiful mother. We pray in the name of Jesus that the Holy Spirit will comfort and keep them and give them a strength, Father, and a peace that passes all understanding, keeping their hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Thank you, Father, for blessing their family in the name of Jesus. And thank you for a wonderful homegoing service that they'll have, a celebration of his life, of Jesse's life. In Jesus' name, we thank you for it, Father. Amen. Well, we love you all. Have a wonderful and blessed day. And remember, serve somebody. Serve some people. When you do, you'll really live. Love you.